When the USA exploded two nuclear bombs over Japan in 1945, it was perhaps the largest demonstration of power in the history of civilization. But there was more to follow, for the devastating explosions over Hiroshima and Nagasaki were just the starting point of a desperate arms race between the USA and the Soviet Union. And during the next 40 years, the nuclear stockpiles of the superpowers would grow at an alarming rate, leading on several occasions to the world being so close to a nuclear war. It wasn't until the end of the Cold War that thousands of nuclear bombs were disarmed and the world could once more breathe easy, at least for a while. Today, the number of countries with atomic weapon arsenals is on the increase, and the likelihood that terrorist groups could any day get their hands on this technology is greater than ever. At 8.15 in the morning of August 6, Japanese time, the first atomic bomb hit an enemy target. The bomb was aimed to explode above zero point. Here is the pictorial record of the result. At zero point, directly beneath the explosion. This is Hiroshima, the day after the atom bomb exploded over Japan's seventh largest city and etched its message of doom to an empire. 30% of the city's population was killed, some by radioactive gamma rays and others by the heat of radiation that showed its intensity in many freakish ways. After the destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan surrendered unconditionally and World War II came to an end. At the same time, the usage of such bombs was the culmination of a huge military science program conceived a few years earlier. Back in December 1938, it became clear that Nazi Germany had worked on developing an atomic bomb. And so concerned was Hungarian scientist Leo Szilard about this, that when he escaped from Germany, he contacted his former mentor, Albert Einstein. Szilard was faced with this problem of having to, in effect, cross from science to politics, and he didn't know how to do this. And so he went to uh, his friend, Albert Einstein, who, who was a public figure, uh, very well known, uh, and asked Einstein, how do we how do, we do this? Uh, what, what can we do? Because we have to get a message to President Roosevelt he warned Roosevelt that uh, the uh, Germans seemed to have some sort of uh, project going. It wasn't quite sure uh, for what purpose. And in fact, they did have such an atomic bomb project functioning at that time. At first, American President Roosevelt was reluctant towards Einstein's and Szilard's warnings. But in December 1941, when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor naval base, Roosevelt speeded up development of the so-called Manhattan Project. Once it kicks into gear, as it's a very sort of typically American thing, it's big, it's very dynamic. I think the best example is to say that the Americans improvised an industry as big as their car industry um, in order to build an atomic bomb. Uh, with factories in uh, particularly three different places. Uh, but uh, these factories themselves will employ upwards of 20, 25,000 people, none of whom actually know remotely what they're building. Strictest security safeguards America's atomic secrets. Every person working on a nuclear research project is intensively screened by the Atomic Energy Commission's protective force. And in the rugged areas where even the versatile jeep cannot travel, mounted patrols ring atomic energy sites. At Los Alamos, amidst the wild, picturesque mountains of New Mexico, horses are of great value. The biggest challenge in the production of an atomic bomb is its major active component, enriched uranium. And even though one single bomb only contains a quantity of uranium the size of a tennis ball, the expense is enormous, as shown when Roosevelt scientists demonstrated the result of their efforts in New Mexico at a total cost exceeding $2 trillion. 
On July 16, 1945, in the desert near Alamogordo, New Mexico, the first atomic bomb was tested. They were almost like like children waiting for some uh, an amazing event to happen. They were told, for instance, that they should not look at the blast, but some of them couldn't even resist doing that. Um, and it, they were they were absolutely bowled over by this this huge conflagration that they had created. And so there was the immediate excitement. But then, very immediately after that, you get a. a an almost spiritual reaction to this because they sense that they have done something which um, human beings maybe aren't supposed to do. Even though the head of the atomic bomb project, Robert Oppenheimer, was happy with the success of the project, he was at the same time terrified enough by the potential of what he'd seen to quote an ancient Indian script which states, I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. Although war in Europe had ceased two months earlier, fighting in the Pacific Ocean still continued with great losses on both sides. Upon the death of USA's President Roosevelt, it was now up to Vice President Harry Truman to decide whether or not to use the top secret atomic bomb against Japan. The political leadership, certainly, particularly President Truman, wanted to end the war quickly. I mean, there were plans to bring US troops that were based in Europe to the Pacific front. Uh, those troops were, were certainly unhappy and almost rebellious about that prospect. Um, there was a great deal of concern that the invasion of Japan would lead to just an incredible number of American casualties. Experts predicted the invasion would last 18 months, cost half a million lives. As an alternative to invasion, the generals proposed the atomic bomb. The destruction it would cause might bring a Japanese surrender. Our assumption that they went through uh, major soul searching at the time, and they had to, and they they walked the the, the floor late at night, thinking uh, should they or should they not use nuclear weapons, is an uh, assumption they didn't have. They merely wanted to end the war fast, and if they had a weapon that would do that, then they would use the weapon. Uh, and Truman referred to it in his diary as such, uh, how he thanked God that um, uh, the United States had developed that weapon and, and that it would ensure U.S. power in the post-war period. On July 24, 1945, Truman approached Stalin at the very end of a meeting and said to him that we have now a weapon of tremendous destructive force. And Stalin, in fact, did not react at all. He was completely silent. Why? Because Stalin did not want to show that he was um, scared. I made the run, let the bomb go, 